Okay, so as we said, uh, we are going to talk about uh, homogeneous precipitation. It happens everywhere randomly within the matrix material. We're talking, we want to know something about nucleation rate. And uh, this, we are kind of discussing in a way similar to what we said before for liquid solidification. We are defining a few terms. The first one is C star, the number density, C4 density, or concentration in another way, number density of nucleus with critical size of R star. R star is your critical size, which means if it's smaller than that one, it has a tendency to shrink back or in this case, transform from the new beta phase back into the host alpha structure. Okay, that's the concentration of nucleus. And C0 is the atom density. Per unit volume, how many total atoms there are. There are. And uh, th this data G star homogeneous, that's our so-called uh, nucleation barrier, our critical nucleation energy. Makes sense? Star for that critical value. It means what? It uh, means, okay, the system locally has to overcome this barrier before that critical nucleus can grow so-called uh, spontaneously, naturally, without much push, without some activation. If you achieve that energy, it will automatically grow. Okay, you don't have to wait, it will just grow naturally, very fast. Okay, and uh, from what we learned before, this critical nucleation barrier or critical nucleation energy would uh, what? Decrease, read, as temperature decrease or under cooling increase. Make sense? As we are further below the equilibrium temperature, our temperature would be lower, our so-called uh, quote-unquote undercooling would be larger. And the larger the undercooling, what we learned before quite often, the smaller this barrier. Put another way, if you are just below the equilibrium temperature, your barrier height would be very, very large. Okay? And the relationship is what we learned before, C star, this critical nucleus concentration would be the total atom concentration times this exponential factor. This exponential factor. Depends on temperature, depends on homogeneous uh, nucleation barrier. Okay? And then if we define another term called F term, the frequency. Frequency of what? Frequency of successfully adding a new atom onto a what? onto a nucleus, critical nucleus, to make it so-called supercritical, which means make it grow. That's the probability of adding atom into a critical nucleus. If we have these two terms, then the total nucleation rate for solid, now we are not talking about uh, solidification, we are talking about precipitation. It has a unit of number per unit volume per ton, okay? The nucleation rate, we write it as this. N for nucleation rate, HOMO for homogeneous, not in specific location, equals the frequency, how frequent you are adding to a nucleus times what? The number density of that critical nucleus. Make sense? We depend on two things. How, what's the number density of these so-called critical nucleus and how frequent we are adding atoms to it. If you are not adding atoms to it, what's the nucleation rate? No, 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 stay zero, right? Because anything, even it forms, it doesn't grow. You're not adding atoms to it, it doesn't grow, then it's still zero. On the other hand, if you are trying to add, but your number density is too low, your still nucleation rate is low. So that's this factor. And then we put the C star from here, right? The C star, we write it as C zero times this exponential term. That gives us a total, total nucleation rate. And for solid precip uh, precipitation, we have this. We plot G 
free energy versus kind of location. This is our high energy state. This is our low energy state. This is probably an exaggeration. In between is our so-called migration barrier. Remember, right? For atoms to go, to move, from one location to the other location, kind of for diffusion, we need to overcome a diffusion activation energy, that, that barrier. If we call that data GM, then the frequency of adding an atom, we can kind of represent as something like this. Omega, a pre-exponential term. Let's don't go into the detail what that term is. Plus a exponential term, which tells us the probability of overcoming what? the so-called diffusion or migration barrier. M for migration, this migration from one location to another location, that always some barrier. The probability of overcoming that barrier times a pre-exponential term. That gives us the frequency of adding an atom to a so-called critical nucleus, okay? And then we said that a GM is migration barrier and it's quite often, independent of temperature. That's kind of like when we think, when we were dealing with diffusion, do we really say the diffusion uh, energy barrier change with temperature? Not really, we said, okay, it's kind of treated as the same. How much you have to push the atoms around you in order for you to move from one location to the next location. We said, okay, that really, that barrier, how much you have to put, push, atoms around you to go from one location to another doesn't really depend too much on temperature. So this data GM is independent temperature, okay? As a result, we write the total N homo, homogeneous nucleation rate, as all these terms time together. Omega, that's related to how frequent we're adding atom. C0 is initial atom density. The first data G, the exponential term, represents the probability of what? Data GM overcoming the migration barrier. The second one would be the probability of what? Funding so-called critical nucleus. Okay, so this is what we have.